All right. Are you ready to do a show? Nope. But we're going <laughs> to do it anyway. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're sick, and then we've lost Dylan. So I think the only thing we can do now is what WWE did, which is replace him with Jonathan Coachman. So, hey, welcome to the show, Jonathan Coachman, everybody. Woo! -hoo! No, that's when you that's when you start doing your hilarious coach impression that we all know you can do. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's Coach. I am John Coachman. It's me. Good to see you. Hello, I have all of the funny quirks of Jonathan Coachman. <laughs> Hello, I am the coach. Welcome to Fight Boys. Yes. So welcome to Fight Boys, ladies oh, and gentlemen, no. the, the, week, <laughs> the weekly podcast about professional wrestling and not so professional wrestling. I am your host, Scotty Moore, joined as always by my tag team partner in crime and a boy who has so much cough medicine in his system that I think he has ascended to another level of existence. It is Blake Tanner. We're going down to Wrestletown, boy. Choo-choo life in the fast lane. <laughs> and then, unfortunately, we do not have Dylan this week. Uh, Dylan had some dead. stuff to deal with. It. <laughs> oh, okay. He's already dead. <laughs> You're just like, I have gone beyond the multiple realms, and I have seen him, and he is a dead man. I see things that only Vincent Kennedy McMahon sees. And Vincent Kennedy McMahon sees people that don't kneel. <laughs> he sees good old American football played the right way in the XFL. Without kneeling. Without kneeling. I'm He's sorry, did you a catch a touchback in the end zone? <laughs> Bitch, you better not kneel. <laughs> I actually, I also heard that he's not even allowing players named Neil into the organization. Like, Neil Patrick Harris was really excited. He's like, oh, I can't wait to go to the first, like, XFL game. And Vince was like, no, you're not allowed. No Neil. Oh, no, you can't even get in. Yeah, yeah, you can't even get in the arena. That's, how, like, I didn't know, because the X in XFL is extreme, isn't it? I can't yes. remember what the X stands for. What's more extreme than protesting, Vince? You're not building the Republican, the RFL, the Republican Football League. Well, he is building the RFL because it's the racist football league. Whoa. Racism no. football. Take him, let's just start <laughs> a racism football theme? league. Racism football. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. As performed... By Hank Williams Jr. Are you ready for some racist football? Because <sighs> it's Monday, baby. <laughs> racist football. Monday night, racist football. We're competing with our own other products. <laughs> Monday night racism brought to you by Vincent Kennedy McMahon in the XFL. Only on Fox. Yeah. I just, I hope that it's... The XFL is going to be used small enough towns that an Alabama town gets one, so we get, like, the Bear Birmingham Badgers or something. You know, just coming. Birmingham did have an XFL team the first go-around. Wait, really? I didn't know this. Yeah, they were the Birmingham Lightning Bolts, the Birmingham Bolts. Oh, okay, I'm happy that it was just Birmingham Bolts, because Birmingham Lightning Bolts is such a mouthful that does not need to be... It's as yep. awkward of a name as Drake Maverick, but they still went with that one, so. Uh, I do not know if Birmingham would get another XFL team, seeing as they just elected one of the most progressive mayors in their history. Yeah, and uh, I don't know, has the election happened for Scott Dawson, not of the, not of the, uh, of the revival to become uh, our governor? No. Although, I do share the sentiment that some people share towards the revival, towards Scott Dawson, the governorial candidate. Yeah. Fuck the revival. Fuck the revival. 
<laughs> and by the revival, we mean Scott Dawson running for Alabama governor's gubernatorial seat. There we go. Can I just say the? I don't. I ain't mad at the fact that they changed Rockstar Spud's name. Like Drake Maverick is the ultimate. Like it sounds like a douchey rock star name, and that's what Rockstar Spud is. Basically, like, like that's all his character has ever been its best at. Yeah, and in all honesty, I think Drake Maverick works well as a name for him. I think the crowd booed because they were just like, that's not his name. We know his name, Daniel. Fuck you. Daniel, give him back that potato name right now. Give him back his terrible name that we all pretended to like. We want, we want Guitar Potato. <laughs> oh my gosh, what's Guitar Potato doing here in the in the 205 Live Arena? It being I mean, announced by Baramy Jorash. Baramy Jor, oh my god, he comes out in a giant bear suit. <laughs> what's up, kids? It's me, Baramy. Oh. Did you see the photo that Maxel King Maxel put on Instagram or er, on Twitter? No. It is. It's backstage, I guess, at SmackDown, and it is. It's Rockstar Spud, and he's just leaned down, like talking to Maxel. And Maxel put it on Twitter. And just goes, "This guy seems familiar, but I don't know who he is." Oh, I love that so much. I think. But that, yeah, like. Well, I think that some people were mad that another recent signee who just came on got to keep his name. And theme song. Wait, did he keep the theme song? Oh, yes. Oh, fuck. That makes me as happy as I could possibly be in the entire world. At least I was looking it up and it did say his first NXT theme and it's basically just the same song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, the thing with Rockstar Spud, though, is he needed a new name. And at least they did give a nod to it, which I guess the people in attendance couldn't hear be like... Because the commentators were like, yeah, that's fucking Rockstar Spud. Like, we're not trying to hide mm -hmm. it. It's just a matter of, that's a shitty name, mm -hmm. so let's change it. I, but dude... And Rockstar yeah. Spud, let's be honest, that's much more dumb of a name than... J B Maverick, Bobby Dawson, Maverick, James. <laughs> I don't remember what his new name is other than Maverick. <laughs> Such a stupid name other than Halls Cop Syrup with Sprite Jolly Rancher Maverick. Mm, now that's a name I could get into. <laughs> Man, I, I don't know why. Because I knew they were talking about EC3 showing up at NXT. I still freaked out. I got so hyped. Because everyone else, they were like, yeah, we signed this person, and we signed this person, and then EC3. And I was like, oh, fuck, yes. I have they done... Love have they... EC3. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Have they done the latest uh, round of NXT tapings? I'm gonna... Go I guess I should have probably Googled that, but I didn't. Uh... uh if they have, I have not seen any. I've not seen any spoilers of him showing up and actually doing stuff. Yeah, or of having any trouble, 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 trouble. Uh, trouble. I'm just. I'm really excited for EC3. I'm really ex excited for fucking Potato Maverick. And I don't know. I th did your internet experience about Ronda Rousey get as negative as quickly as mine did? Oh, it was negative before she even showed up to me. Well, but that's what I was wait, seeing like, at least. So. Oh, okay. Cause like for me, I'm like it's it's like when Tyson showed up and joined DX and did that. Now obviously she's gonna have more pull than that because yeah. she's actually on the roster i mean she's I guess. officially signed up for a full-time contract with the wwe as of right now but like i i had people going hard on ronda like people were just like you know she's not even that entertaining she's not this she's like not charismatic i'm like she was an undefeated champion like and also can i just say when she's not in full fight mode adorable as hell ronda mm -hmm. rousey is exceptionally adorable I think it was definitely the right move for her to come to WWE because 
it's true that she was an undefeated champion for as long as she was, but the way that she was defeated was quite final. It, what, it wasn't that bad of... It was a semi-bad defeat. But Then it I was another it was, pretty bad defeat. I can't even remember the next match she had after that. Well, it was a rematch. But, oh, that's and right. And she got beat again. Well, yeah, it's that, but also a matter of, like, I think... A lot of people, especially in like the MMA news community, diss Ronda because they're just like, she went into hiding. She didn't give any interviews or anything after the fight. Essentially being like, she didn't give us anything to write about after her fight. Hmm. She went into hiding. I'm like, yeah, it was her first fucking loss. Give the woman. And she already has like mental shit going on. Give her time. Yeah, that's the problem with anybody in the uh, in the public sphere. If you don't like... If you're not generating stories for them, then they're going to make their own shit up and just slam you for whatever. Yeah, and they're just going to destroy you like they tried to do with Ronda. And I love Ronda. I think Ronda's off. Like, did you you know about the jacket she wore, right? At yeah. At the end of the Rumble? It belonged to Roddy Piper. Yeah, it was Pi- apparently like Piper's kid gave it to her. And I remember her coming out with it and being like, that looks a lot. Firstly, a I jacket. forgot what her... I forgot what her theme song was, and so I, it started playing, and I was like, that's a weird song for the pay-per-view to go, oh, it's Ronda. Oh, shit. I'm just... That was... And then she came out, and I just... I immediately recognized the jacket, and I was like, oh, cool, she got, like, a replica jacket, and then the news broke, and I'm like, she got his jacket. Yep. She has to be on a different brand than Oscar. Oh, I firmly believe they're going to be doing Oscar versus Alexa, and then Charlotte versus um, Charlotte versus, versus Rouse. uh, uh R- R- Ronda. Rousey, yeah. Rosie, Rosie. I hope they don't keep the whole Roddy Piper thing going, though. Like, I, I understand her nickname is was literally given to her by Rowdy Rowdy Piper, but I don't want that to be who she is. Rowdy Rowdy just, Piper. Yeah, Rowdy Ra- Roddy Rowdy Piper. The cold, the, the cold, the cough syrup, man. Ra- Roddy Rowdy Piper. Ru- Rudy, 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 Rudy. Ru- Rudy Tootie, candy ass motherfucker. Poon oh, Tang Pie. <laughs> Poon Tang Pie. So, God. I don't know what happened this week, but everyone is talking about Paige's retirement like a month after it happened. And it's ranged from. Uh, I won't go fully into it, but da, 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 Ryback was just like, she's a very sweet girl, and it's sad what happened, and I hope WWE can keep her employed. That's the calmness that we expect from Ryback now. Mm-hmm. Now let's move on to Missy High. In this world of 2018 where up is down and Ryback is <laughs> a genial <laughs> conversationalist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ryback, who recently debuted for the JWF. Um, but, yeah, apparently... Th- have you read what Missy Hyatt said about Paige? No, I'm scared. Ahem. So, you know, she after an attack by Sasha, Paige had to retire. And Missy Hyatt, instead of being... She said, overall, I think she had the opportunity to do something great and have a really, really great run. And I think she spoiled it. I think it's sad because she had a could have had a great run and made a lot of money and probably never have to work again. And I heard WWE didn't want her to have neck surgery, but she pressed for it. And they're like, you're too young to have neck surgery. But she spoiled it. What the fuck, Missy? That sounds like a really dumb thing to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Welcome to why I was confused at Ryback being like, it was a very terrible thing that happened, and she she deserves better than this. And then Missy Hyatt's just like, how dare you get kicked in the fa- in the neck? Yeah, how dare it's you? It's your fault that you got hurt. It's you your victim. Fault that I'm you're... blaming you. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. And speaking of like people. Uh, trying to get people to stop shit. Did you see the spot from the Oscar or Oscar Sasha Banks match? No. Maybe. So, okay, l- let me see if I can sum it up. Possibly. The be- the best way I can describe it. Um 
Sasha, Asuka's on the outside of the ring and Sasha decides to do the suicide dive. And literally, Asuka rears back, kicks Sasha in the face as she dives, and Sasha falls head first onto the mat. It was the most brutal spot I've seen in my entire life. And, uh, fun fact, you know you've got, you fucked up when Mick Foley tells you to stop doing what you're doing. Because Mick, Mick Foley went to Twitter, let me see if I can find the exact thing, because he was just like, yeah, no, you, you have, d please do not do this ever again, yeah. seriously. I'm gonna ask you to stop doing that. Just gonna be, Sasha, just gonna I right swear. Sasha, you're nearly killing yourself in the ring. For what? For a match against Asuka, we knew you were going to lose anyways. Oh, man. I th the, uh, speaking of some real fucked up shit that happened, did you mm -hmm. see, like, I I've seen it getting in a little traction recently, but the Braun and Brock in their match at the Rumble. Oh, where fucking a lot of people have said it was a shoe, and Brock got pissed. Where Brock just rears back well, and nearly knocks yeah. out Braun. You see, if you slow down, there's a point in the match where Brock is on his knees, and Braun goes in for like a knee, and you can tell that he kind of stiffs the knee a little bit, and it rocks mm -hmm. Brock's jaw. Brock responds by getting up, basically kind of <laughs> no-selling it, and then doing two quick, real powerful, like, actual MMA jabs into Braun's yeah. skull. Um, and pr props to, I know Braun's a big boy, that's still a hard punch to take, so props to Braun for taking it. Yeah, and if it is a shoot, it's also, like, very not a great thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... Well, I mean... Well, one think... thing, he did hit him right in, like, the temple area, and I don't yeah. care how big you are, that I'll could kill you. Down. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of where I am. There was some other... I can't remember what it was. It was some earlier match. And I think it might have been... I can't remember who it was. Someone took the Kinsh I think it was the Kinshasa... And they take it, and they immediately, like, st and I guess it's fine, because it was in the Royal Rumble, so you kind of have to stand back up. But someone took a Kinshasa, and instead of laying down, started to stand back up. And I'm like, no, 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 That's not how you That's handle that. Move. That's not how you take that move. No, no, no. You are dead now. You must be dead. Do I do not care what spots you had planned. You are now dead. Speaking of things that happened in the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Um, Rey Mysterio returned, which was a great pop for everyone. Right. Um, good, good, uh, a good book into the last time he showed up yeah, in Philadelphia. The, the last time he showed up. Oh, uh, but, um, the video of him returning has three times as many views on YouTube, um, as compared to Ronda debuting, and wait, I thought that was interesting. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, dude, like, I thought... Uh, I don't know what it is, but I definitely thought that was going to get a lot more press coverage than it did. Like, I've had yeah. very few people, like, because I am the person in my friend group where if something happens with WWE, they'll be like, did you see this or hear about this? No one. No one has been like Ronda, because I think WWE is kind of like a third world country in that they Basically. get everything, they get everything like just a couple of days late or a couple of years late. And so Rhonda, like, if they had done it a couple of years ago, it would have been red hot. And now they're like, oh, yeah, she's still around. Cool. Oh, she did a thing. Yeah, she did a thing That's once. Good. She's doing stuff. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you see Sasha talking about Rhonda? <laughs> oh, please tell me what Sasha said. Oh, well, I can't tell you much because all she said was that uh, she was on the Busted Open show that's like Bully Ray and all that. Yeah. They asked her about Ra Rousey. All Sasha said, I have nothing nice to say, so I can't say anything at all. I have nothing to say about it. Damn. Damn. Like, damn. Sasha gonna be the CM Punk of the women's division. <laughs> she gonna leave one day. 
<laughs> but yeah, what were you saying uh, about Rey Mysterio? About good old Rey Rey? Um, there was a moment in the Rumble, and it was after both Rey and Cena had entered, where Cena backs Rey up into the turnbuckle, and he turns him around, and he kind of, Cena stares at Rey for a second, and he just walks away. Oh, wait, really? I didn't see that part. Um, I, I saw someone on Reddit caption it as like, uh, when you're trying to do a cool move, but you accidentally switch your targets in 2K18. <laughs> That's so good. Oh, man, and you know what else is so good, Blake Tanner? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of our lovely merchandise over at merch.aloadofpurebs.com. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, merch.aloadofpurebs.com is the only website where you can get the official merchandise for these good fight boys right here. We got shirts with the fight boys logo on it. We got shirts that let people know if you're a fight boy or, of course, a fight girl for life. And we have shirts for all your favorite JWF superstars. Shirts for Blake Tanner, Scotty Moore, for Eye to Eye, all of your favorite JWF superstars, but of course the only way to get it is over at merch.aloadofpurebs.com, which Blake means it's time for everyone's favorite weekly segment that's finally happening. And that is, of course, a Dust Watch 2018. <laughs> I like to picture lights coming Ooh. down, like who wants to be a millionaire style. But if you do. Um, so what should we tell Chucky e. T? At Sexy Chucky e. T. E. Everybody S hyped about that Ricochet hey. debut, but we're more hyped <laughs> about that delicious lunch you had. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> no, hope no. to see you in 2019 <laughs> at number 30. But everyone's hyped about the Ricochet debut, but we're more hyped about... I, I kind of want to just put that chicken sandwich. Like, hold on. This... Can we make it not about Chuck this week? And it's just a random message to Chuck Taylor Chuck. about the new spicy nacho fries from Taco Bell. Oh. Hey, Chucky, you tried those fries yet? They any good. <laughs> but we're more hyped about the brand new uh, hashtag nacho fries from at Taco Bell. <laughs> you new. had those yet? Uh, you had those cheesy boys yet? They any good? How's that? How's that nacho season? <laughs> hashtag Dustwatch2018. Hashtag please RT and follow. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why just bringing up Ricochet in the beginning of it. Oh, <laughs> uh, hold on. Hey, gonna... how does it feel that now that all of your friends are dead and they went to WWE? Everyone hyped about that King Ricochet NXT day, people were more hyped about the brand new night. This is what happens when we're on cough medicine. Hashtag sorry, we're on cough medicine. Uh, Hashtag butts wash 2018. <laughs> butts wash. Oh, Jesus. That might be my favorite dust watch we've done so far, is randomly asking Dustin about nacho fries from Taco Bell. Oh. Man, I, I'm trying this to... This is going to be the one that he responds to. He's yeah, like, this is going to be the Dude, one. They're all right. They're pretty good. Uh, man, I'm just trying to think, because the Royal Rumble was really good, finally, after many, many years. Yeah. See, this is it was it was so good that even a late Roman Reigns entrance couldn't spoil it. Oh, I was waiting the whole time. I'm just like every time the clock was ticking down, I was just going didn't 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 didn't. And I, I one thing I really enjoyed that they did was instead of like because like 
after Raw 25, we had the discussion about, like, having old-timers come back and getting that glory moment and how bad, like, it kind of hurts the biz- business. The only real... I don't want to call him an old-timer because he's not. He still works. But Hurricane came back, yeah. and, and they did not pull a Hurricane's gonna get a glory moment. It was a we about to throw Hurricane the fuck out the ring moment. Oh, my favorite part of that was after he, like, got thrown out, and this happened to anybody that hit that part of the ring after a certain part of the matches. He just <laughs> steps full on in pancakes. He sees the pancakes, and he gets mad at those pancakes. That's what I loved was, like, for the rest of the match, they were just random pancakes on the outside. Mm-hmm. Although that did remind me of my favorite elimination of the entire match, and I did have to send it to you dumbfounded. Because after the 10, like, it was easily 10 entrants of people coming in, looking down, seeing Heath Slater, beating the shit out of Heath Slater, and then walking to the ring. Finally, Sheamus is like, I'm gonna toss him in the ring and get him out. And then Sheamus gets eliminated in like two seconds by Heath Slater. God, that was perfect. That was very lovely. Yeah. I don't know why Seamus turned Scottish for a minute, but it was Fuck lovely. Ye. <laughs> but no, like I was saying, like I really enjoyed that instead of having a bunch of old timers come back, which I do like. I like the pop that it gives me. Yeah. They, ins- they instead brought up like they brought up Andre Cien Almas, which was amazing, and they let him stick around for a while. They brought up Adam Cole, which Bye-bye. made me they made it made me audibly scream in my house. I just oh. remember saying, shock the system, and I went, ah! Ooh. And you know what? I'm even glad that they had the, that the final four they had was who it was, because it was Finn Balor and Shinsuke Nakamura versus, basically versus, um, John Cena and Roman Reigns. And new John Cena. I really new do. John I, Cena. I, I enjoyed the New sa- John. New John. And then John, new John stabbed a dude. Yeah. <laughs> And then I just, I really enjoyed the whole old school versus new school thing they played. Because who was it? It was Shinsuke, Finn, and who was the other guy for the new era? I can't remember. But it was them, and then on the other end you had Ray, John, and Rome. Wait, no, no, Roman was new era. That's right. Yeah, yeah, Roman was newer. And then uh, and then you had Randy, John, and Ray Ray on the other side. It was like an older era. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. that's really dope that they played it like that. Uh, there was one moment in the Rumble where um, uh, Mr. Loudmouth Cena, um, like it was as soon as Cena and Roman had knocked down um, – Balor and Nakamura, yeah. and you could tell the crowd was the crowd was get they were turning they were getting hot they were about to spit fire on those two motherfuckers, and then John he looks at the audience and he can see he can see all that goodwill that he's built up over the last two years slowly just draining away and you hear and he just yells Shin now Nakamura now <laughs> just just do it already do Fuck it. it. And that's when Nagamora and Balor, I guess, got up and they did their spot, taking those two out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was masterful. Man, I just remember, I just remember uh, when Finn got eliminated. I was like, no! <laughs> Damn it! That yep. was one, uh, although I did, when Ziggler came out at number 30, firstly, the best fuck you of a number 30 ever is Dolph Ziggler. I know, right? But I'll, also, I was just like, yes, I knew it! I knew he was coming back for this! Mm-hmm. Although, now that I think about it, because I read about everything that happened on SmackDown, like, you know, uh, Sammy and Kevin kind of pulling a, a breakup and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Didn't read much about Dolph Ziggler showing up. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I'm sorry, Dolph, you, you are not at part-timer contract level yet. And even no. if you are, it would make no sense, like, at all. No, I mean, you're at the point where, like, you've been there long enough, you should be starting to consider it, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, possibly maybe get there. And, uh, dude, I feel bad that uh, we don't have Dylan on to talk about this, but I do feel we need to discuss the fact that the fucking Bullet Club is finally imploding. Yes, it's been so long. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, <laughs> uh, I... I'm scared. I... Living in a world without the Bullet Club. Well, no. Uh, the latest being the Elite, Cody was just like, Bullet Club is fine! Bullet Club is fine! And I'm like, Cody, you didn't watch the show that you were on where you fucked mm. it all up. Oh... Uh, well, see, this is when they're getting to the phase where they're going to break up into, like, the Bullet Club and then, like... The Elite. The, the Bullet Pack. <laughs> bullet Pack! The, <laughs> the Bullet Wolf Pack. The, well, well, no, I re I think what it's going to be is the Elite, which is now going to be Kenny, the Young Bucks, and Ibushi versus Bullet Club. And then I would probably put Marty with the Elite because, damn yeah. it, Marty is too lovable. Marty has went... Marty's girl has gone in recent months from being this terrifying Jack the Ripper motherfucker who will break your fingers apart and come out like a demonic hell doctor to just an adorable teddy bear. And I love both versions of him. Yep. God, can I just say how touching of a fucking moment that was when Ibushi and uh, Kenny, like, yeah. reconciled. Yeah, well, here's the thing with Kenny. I think Kenny, like, has reached a point where he's probably going to WWE soon. Like, yep. I I read it, not soon as in, like, in upcoming months, but, like, the next year. And I think he reached a point where he was like, the reason why I loved being here is because I love Japan and I love the Japanese culture. And for the past three years, I've been running a gimmick where I refuse to speak Japanese or acknowledge their culture. So I think he's just like, I got one more year left in me. I want to do something like closer to what I started yeah. here. So basically, Kenny said, yes, I am the biggest closeted weeaboo in the world. That motherfucker ain't closeted, are you kidding me? Yeah, his character is. Oh, yeah, his character definitely is. I also like that he talked about going to WWE and, like, the reason why he hasn't, and legitimately it's because of the New Day. <laughs> Not because he's like, I couldn't work with them. He's like, uh, he, he goes, when I see Big E, I clearly see someone who could be world champion. Guys on another level. Kofi's one of the guys who could challenge for literally any title. And Xavier is another great athlete who's talented in the ring and confident on the, on the mic. And, but really, I just want to play video games with him. Yeah, and well, he goes, and essentially because they've been in the same spot for so many years, that's why he was like, I kind of don't want to do this because I don't want to be in the same spot year after year after year. Mm -hmm. Also, I like that the video game rivalry between him and Xavier is so strong that when he just talks about New Day, he's like, Biggie, fantastic wrestler, could be world champion. Kofi? Kofi could challenge for any title that he wants. Xavier? He is another great athlete who's talented and confident on the mic. But mm -hmm. fuck you, I can beat you in Street Fighter V any day. Bring it. Lego, right now, motherfucker, fly on down. <laughs> right now, me and you, me and you, let's do this. I'll cook the pancakes. I will. Okay, my dad asked this question during the pay-per-view, and it's something that I realized since I don't watch SmackDown often that I've yet to understand myself, which is, why the fuck does New Day have pancakes? You know, <laughs> when... <laughs> New Day just one day started talking about cereal and how they made buttholes into cereal. Yeah. One day, New Day just started talking about pancakes. And now they're having pancakes. And now they have pancakes. I love that the New Day, as far... They they are surpassing D-Generation X on just having weird shit that, that they're trying to sell. Because now, yep. isn't there the Book of Booty or something like that? The, yeah, yeah, I think I've heard about that. Yeah, where there's going to be a New Day book and stuff like that. And I'm like, none of it. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if they were like, New Day pancake mix, come get it. We don't care. Fuck it. New Day. My favorite thing about the New Day uh, merchandise were the New Day socks, where you got a pair of three socks. I'm sorry. I was taking a sip of my beverage <laughs> when you just told me <laughs> that they 
sold a bag of socks with three socks. Yeah. Which New Day, because they, okay, because it started with when the crowd was chanting New Day sucks. They are like, oh, they're saying New Day sucks. Then they came out with shitty New Day socks. Then they came out with really cool New Day socks that I own that have all of their faces on them. Yep. Have they come up with more New Day socks? Was it socks or... It, there was a recent merch item that I saw that there was like, oh, <sighs> we've got these for this tag team, these for this tag team, and there's two, 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 three for New Day. Like, I'm, I'm currently on the New Day's WWE shop page, and I see exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> It's the odd socks. It's the socks that look like uh, just like a lo- elongated form of a wrestler. Yep. And it is three of the New Day. Well, All- also, Big E looks terrifying on them. Well, that's what, like, Xavier goes on your left leg, uh, Kofi goes on the right, and then, and then Big Wool goes in the middle. On the Big E. Big, big, wool, big wool covers your covers your good areas. Yeah. You know what I just realized? So, like, New Day held the tag titles for 483 days, right? Yeah. The New Day replica title belt, which looks really fucking awesome and I wouldn't mind owning, costs $483, which just shows how little they care about pricing. They're like, fuck it, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. That's one of those, man, if you got the money to pay for this, like... Get it. You don't give a fuck. Man, I know we're trying to get that good sponsor from uh from Me Undies, and I I literally I always wear Me Undies. They're the most comfortable things of all time. But I would own these WWE New Day boxer briefs. Holy shit, they look awesome. Well, whoever uh fu- the E fucking has for their uh for their cloth supplier, that shit's comfy That's so as good. fuck. Yeah, but it's not the lovely micromoto fabric provided by me on this, which just mm-hmm. hugs you so right. I'm just, pre- I'm prepping us at this point. Yeah, New Day doesn't have as much buck wild stuff as they used to. There is Bootios, the Bootios lunchbox, a Bootios drawstring bag, and then a flag with Bootios on it. And then... I love the up, up, down, down. Mer- now we're just exploring the New Day's it's, merchandise website. It's a rabbit hole in its own right. It is a rabbit. I really like this power of positivity snapback. Cause it's well, like, it's not so much a rabbit hole as, as it is a booty hole. <laughs> the booty hole. Mm-hmm. Now, oh, now no. here's an interesting piece of merch that some fan created, which is just a rock with the New Day's logo on it, because New Day rocks. New Day rocks. Okay, just get some New Day rocks. Yeah, just <laughs> a big, a big pile of New Day rocks. Okay, I just saw something uh, in my Google situation that made me realize the one thing I hated more than anything else about the Women's Royal Rumble. I okay. really I enjoyed the women's Royal Rumble. It was like a low stress rumble because the men's I do feel like I'm about to have a heart attack literally mm-hmm. every second of it. The women's was so low key I knew Oscar was gonna win that I was like, fuck it. Yep. I don't care. And it, it felt so good to see like that was where the real like old timers in the women's division returned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking Trish hitting it at number 30. Trish Damn. killed it in that match, by the way. Can we just yeah. discuss? Like, there were a few where, like, I think it was Tori Wilson, where me and my dad were just like, someone get her out of the ring. Please, someone kick her out of this ring. But then uh, there, there were... Then there were also great moments um, where Lita almost killed herself, as is tradition. Yeah, yeah. But here was my problem with it. Michelle McCool comes out. What does the crowd chant to this diva who, after years of being away, finally returned a former champion, a former great, great wrestler in her own right? The crowd. Now, I haven't seen the whole Women's Rumble yet, but I'm going to guess. Would you, okay, would chanting? you like to guess what they chanted? Undertaker. Oh, yes, that is correct. Uh, and any... You w- fuck Taker. <laughs> yeah. Any women's wrestler who was connected to a male wrestler uh, in a 
marriage way or anything got a chant of that. The only ones who didn't, Beth Phoenix didn't, and I think that's just because a lot of people are like, wait, her and Edge? Really? I didn't know that. So <laughs> so she didn't get anything, and then, of course, Lita didn't get anything. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, they didn't, they don't listen to the uh, pod of awesomeness, brother, brother. Br- brother, brother. But, of course, um, the one I, one thing I wanted until I realized how awkward it would be, I really wanted Lita to start doing a delete chant. Like, oh, I would have no. lost it if she started doing a delete chant. Delita. 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 <laughs> I enjoyed that. That was a good one. And then um, there was a moment later in the match where Beth and Natalia teamed up again after so many years that I just like, mm-hmm. fuck, yes, that's awesome. And then, of course, Natty has to toss out Beth because, of course, she does. Yes. It was interesting seeing which, which of the former like superstars were who came back and were still awesome and then which ones you were just like oh no there was one who kept doing drop kicks to the knee or the ankle area and i'm like that's not how drop kicks work and i can't nope. remember who it was oh yeah it was definitely an interesting i think they did well for their first rumble but yeah molly holly molly holly was fucking amazing my dude, Molly Holly with that haircut. Molly Holly with that mom hair, hot mom haircut. Molly hot Holly. Hot mom haircut. Yeah. 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 And she looked pretty good oh, in the of ring. She, of course she did. Molly Holly. I mean, she amazing. was always good. Yeah. She. Uh, somebody compared like Molly Holly to back in the day is kind of like how Becky is now. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's like the perfect description of all time. Mm-hmm. Um. Although um, I definitely wanted since they had Hurricane come out. During the men's, I wanted her to come out as Mighty Molly. Oh, yes. That would have been amazing. Um, Although, there was one part, I I guess you couldn't have done it this year because it was the first, but if he's still doing this thing by next year, I would. The last three, it didn't matter who it was, as the clock counted down, I was going, Tyler Breeze. It's going to be Tyler Breeze. (laughs) I need Tyler Breeze to come out and drag. That's all I need for this match. But I'm mm. fairly sure the internet would immediately hate Tyler Breeze, and that's something the WWE can't afford right now. No, that's be- that's why at number 29, you have the return that everybody's been waiting for, the big hog, James Ellsworth. <laughs> oh, God! I think the entire it- arena would have set him on fire if that happened. Oh. Which, by the way, I don't know how I feel about the Bellas coming back during that either. That was rough. Yep. Yeah, I was. I mean, because the Bellers are always good, but there it was just a weird spot to put them in, knowing yeah. they weren't gonna show up on Raw or SmackDown the following day. No, uh, because like Brie was never great in the ring, and Nikki Nikki improved a lot, but she was also like. The thing with Nikki is the fact that she didn't have to be... Nikki has the same thing as Alexa Bliss, which is she did not have to be a good technical wrestler. Her character allowed her to carry her through a match to where you didn't even have to care about if she wrestled good technically or not. You just cared about, oh, fuck this person, or oh, this person's Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, that's true, and I think that Nikki was able to embody that really well. Yeah, 100%. I think she gave that gimmick down to Alexa, and Alexa's made it her own and working it very, very well. Speaking it, of Alexa and Braun for the Mix Max Challenge. My favorite, oh, you mean my favorite thing that's ever happened to professional yeah, wrestling? the best thing ever. Um... I don't know what it was, just but when they were doing their promo, yeah, the two of them and Braun was talking. I was just so enamored because Braun, up until this point, has been just like this unstoppable monster who's been like more akin to a bear than a man. Yeah. But then I realized, oh, this huge creature, he's a human boy. He's just a big human boy. He's just a big boy. <laughs> He's, he has feelings. I really enjoyed the promo they did where Braun was teaching Alexa how to lift cars. Yeah. <laughs> and she's in the giant shirt, and he's just like, can I not get a shirt that fits me? No. I wore that shirt. I sweated in it. And she just looks down at it like, oh, God, no. Oh, no. Oh, that's 
It's so wonderful. It's, and you know what else is wonderful, Blake? Money. <laughs> yes, and all of the money that we get from our lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash fightboys. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen, patreon.com slash fightboys is the only website where you can go to support these good fight boys right here. Of course, and everything you donate, it's all going to go to help us, and everything will help you get into the amazing, fantastic, the greatest professional wrestling organization in the world in Birmingham, Alabama, the JWF for just $1 a month, ladies and gentlemen. $1, we will bring you into the JWF. We will give you a name. We will say it, and then you'll be promptly jobbed out in quick fashion. But, of course, if you want more than that, $5, ladies and gentlemen, $5 over at patreon.com slash fightboys, and we will bring you in. We will welcome you with open arms. We'll give you storylines, a personality, a character. Hell, you may even make it on a pay-per-view like my father has, like Guy Fieri, like all your favorites. You'd be a JWF mid-carder. But if you want to go all the way, if you want to be an all-star, if you want to be a champion, ladies and gentlemen, then $30 over at patreon.com slash fightboys will make you a champion. We don't know how, we don't know when, we don't know in what way, but we know you will have gold around your waist. But that's only available if you donate over at patreon.com slash fightboys. Boys is spelled with a Z, which means Blake Tanner. It is now time to kick it over to everybody's favorite commentators, Captain Tibbs and Silver Spoon, for another episode of JWF Monday Night War. Okay, bye guys. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to JWF Monday Night War. I am your host, as always, Silver Spoon, joined by the owner of the JWF and the man who's fucked more bears than he has women. It is Captain Tibbs. But still not as many as Ric Flair, strangely enough. <laughs> Surprisingly That's enough. That's horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, Captain Tibbs. Let me tell you something, we are coming off of the heels of one of the greatest JWF pay-per-views I've ever seen, the Regal Rumble pay-per-view, absolutely fantastic. Uh, what did you think of it? Pretty good. That's right, and of course we, we got to see champions crowned in the form of the Brunch Boys, uh -huh. we got to see Blake Tanner defend his title, and we got to see quite possibly one of the greatest Regal Rumble matches yeah. I've seen of all time. We had Sills, you need to skip ahead to the, the best entrance. Just just go on. Uh, of course, I, uh, I assume you were talking about, of course, entrant numbers. I believe it was 17, wasn't it, into the match? You decided to wait that late into the match. But, of course, Captain Tibbs did join the Regal Rumble, as did many superstars. Of course, we got to see Rat Boy Connor uh, enter the match. We got to see uh, returns such as Nicolas Cage and Momoa Curry. And, of course, the debut of AJ Steele and many other amazing superstars. But, of course, one man. One man outlasted all of them, and that man was Scotty Moore, who is now firmly on the road. Ba -ba 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 the road to Wrestle Palooza. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, with a regal rumble behind no, us. No, no, it's the route. It's the route to Wrestle. It's the route. <laughs> the route to Wrestle Palooza. Welcome, welcome, JWF former JWF champion, the Dylan, to commentary, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Um, and then, of course, uh... It's literally written on the note cards from the production team. <laughs> of course, but yes, we are on the route to Wrestlepalooza. Did, did you give him moonshine again? Yes. It's, it's real good moonshine. God damn it. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, ladies and gentlemen... Scotty Moore. Why was he here? Scotty Moore. Who knows who he could be going on to face uh, Captain Tibbs? Because, of course... Before we get to Wrestlepalooza, there's a little stop on the way. Uh, the expiration date pay-per-view, known, of course, for the infamous, the deadly ex expiration chamber match. Tibbs, a, a vicious match of your design. Tell us about it. Well, first of all, I wanted to call it the expectoration chamber, but they kind of shot that one down, uh, the rest of the production team. But, yeah, the uh, it's a really good idea. I saw it on TV once. <laughs> yeah, all right. But, of course, uh, the one man we know right now who will definitely be stepping in to that match is our champion, Blake Tanner, who is in our ring right now. And I think he's got a little bit of celebrating to do ahead of his match at the Expiration Chamber pay-per-view. Let's have a listen. <laughs> 
Mm. So, at the Regal Rumble, I finally proved, I think in the minds of some people in the back, I proved them very, very wrong. I proved everyone who's ever come out and called me a paper champion, everyone who said that I only fought weak contenders, that I've never really had a challenge, I proved all of them wrong, and you know I'm talking about someone in particular. Because Dylan, Dylan, he put up a good fight. He, uh, even with the Upper Dicker Band, he showed that he can hang in the ring with a, a champion, the best of them, with me. Uh, but what he didn't realize was that he wasn't facing the same guy that he turned on half a year ago. He wasn't facing the meek little little boy, your little underdog, who just scraped and clawed for every ounce of glory. Nah. He was facing a true champion. He was facing a man who has been through the ringer, who has paid his dues, who knows it's going to take whatever everything that I have to keep this championship. He was facing someone who would go through hell to keep this title around his wa waist and was willing to fight like hell to keep it. So Dylan, you put up a great match, kid, but uh, look, things just didn't go your way. It just wasn't a match for you. Oh, and ladies and gentlemen, here is a, a, a shocking a shocking return. I didn't even know Dylan was here today. Tibbs, I of course thought we gave him the night off, but it looks like he is here and he is not happy with what Blake Tanner is saying about him. Let's have a listen. Kid? Really? You're going to call me kid? You're going to stand in that ring? Oh, you son of a bitch. You know who's being a kid right now? You. You're being the little kid you said you'd outgrown. Bragging about winning a match with an illegal object. See, whenever Tibbs took away the upper dicker because he finally read a rule book about how a wrestling match was supposed to go, I figured he had also read the part where you can't use outside objects in the ring. So when you talk about being a real champion, the only champion you are is of taking shortcuts yet again because you aren't a real champion. You aren't a real wrestler because even with the shortcuts removed from my way I was still moments away from beating you and I guess you just couldn't handle it you caved under the pressure and you took the shortcut and then you wanted to come out here and brag to these people like you're some kind of big shot but you're not Blake you're just a pretender like you've always been and Tibbs Tibbs is no better than in you Take going out of his way to hinder me, yet allow his paper champion to continue his reign, because he can't handle me being champion. So what does he do? He pretends that he read a rule book. He pretends, you know, I, I, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for him. I don't have time for his lack of literacy. I'm just going to take those stairs, and I'm going to beat your head in until you can't walk right. Oh my gosh, and Tibbs, I, I mean, I, I know you thought you were doing the good thing, but I don't think it's that good of a thing because actually Dylan has got those steel steps. He's rushing the ring. Looks All right, like he's hold on, hold stop. on. God damn it. Where, t Tibbs, where are you going? Tibbs. Hey, hey, put those steps down. We aren't in Vince's arena anymore, damn it. I cannot afford another dent in any of my steel steps. But Dylan, all right, now listen, calm down. I hear what you're saying. And I understand, I understand where you're coming from. It wasn't fair for you to get dropped on those steps. It wasn't fair for those steps to be in the ring in the first place. You know what? We should fire whoever mistakenly put those steps in the middle of the ring. I'm, I'm getting you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. And just because of that, I'm going to give you one last shot at the JWF title. But who's in here, Dylan? There's a little bit of a caveat. You get this one last shot, but if you lose, you're never challenging for the JWF championship again as long as that championship is being held by Blake Tanner. But Dylan, just to make all this clear, of course, knowing what's coming up, uh, you aren't going to be facing just Blake Tanner for the JWF championship. You're going to be facing Blake Tanner and four under other men 
in the expiration chamber. Oh my gosh, Tibbs, what an amazing announcement, adding the Dylan to the Expiration Chamber match. Now, of course, as we know, the Expiration Chamber is one of the most hellish structures ever created by the, of course, the genius mind of Captain Tibbs, and dangerous things can be done in it, and who knows what the Dylan will be able to do in there. It's like the internet. It's a series of tubes. <laughs> That's very good, Tibbs. And, uh, but of course, uh, speaking of champions like Blake Tanner, I want to talk about another set of champions, Tibbs. I'd like to talk about our brand new JWF Tag Team Champions, and they are, of course, Brunch Boy, Baron Corbin, and Guy Fieri, the men who defeated Eye to Eye at the Regal Rumble pay-per-view and finally captured those titles that eluded them out over so long. Now, of course, Tibbs, I know you have, you've had mixed feelings about Guy Fieri. How did you feel seeing him win that title? You know what? I think, uh, I think he's all right. That's right. And, of course, Tibbs, we have sent one of our top interviewers, Honeypot, finally coming out of hiding after so long, back into the uh, back in the interviewing saddle, as it were, uh, to interview our brand new tag team champions, the Brunch Boys, and he's backstage with them uh, right now. Hello, Honeypot's McSicky Boy here, and ladies and gentlemen, I am backstage with the brand new JWF tag team champions, the Brunch Boys. Now, boys, after several months of working your way up to the top of the JWF Tag Team Division, you've finally done it. you hit the absolute pinnacle of what this company has to offer in tag matches, in tag accoutrements. How does it feel? How does it feel? Uh, Honeypot, let me tell you something. A few months ago, me and Brunch Boy here... We were forced to watch backstage as two men who had never teamed together were handed the tag titles in a match. They were given the tag. Scott Moore was not even involved in the ending of that match. Scott Moore was kicked out of the match, and yet he was just handed championship gold. Championship gold that Brunch Boy and I dream about. We were forced to watch as Eye to Eye made a joke out of the tag team division. So how does it feel to finally take the titles back and let a real team be champions? It feels great. Vindicating. It proves that what we've done was worth it all. You know, when I left a certain other company to come here, I wasn't sure if I liked it. I was thrown into the main event scene, and the crowd loved me. I would come out, and they would chant, Brunch, boy, brunch, boy, brunch, boy. But something, something felt wrong. Something felt off. I needed something else, something to strive for. And Guy Fieri helped me find that something. You know, that other, that other company that I work for, the company that disrespects me week in and week out, they like to call me the Lone Wolf. They say I walk alone, but I don't walk alone anymore. I walk with my fellow brunch boy, and we'll walk through whoever says anything different, because we are up. Oh my god, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like the Rat Sension are not enjoying what Brunch Boy Baron Corbin had to say, attacking both of the JWF Tag Team Champions from behind. This does not look good, Tibbs. And meanwhile, it looks like Victor putting Brunch Boy into a Boston Crab, just forcing him to watch as Connor picks up. Oh my god, the strength of Connor as he picks up Guy Fieri, powerbombing him through, over a, through the uh, catering table. There's a huge mess. It's chaos backstage. Oh, my God. And it looks like Baron Corbin passing out in pain from the Boston Crab. Now, of course, Tibbs, you've been locked in that Boston Crab before. I mean, it's a vicious move. That's right. And it looks like Victor just tossing, tossing Brunch Boy to the ground. And the Ascension are lining up for it. Oh, and they hit Guy Fieri with a fall of man, sending him down. I mean, the Ascension, they have destroyed our JWF Tag Team Champions in an instant. I think they have made their pick to be the next number one contenders. Meanwhile, it looks like Honeypot is just 
shaking in the corner. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Honey Pot's had a little bit of on-the-job injury, something wrong with his mind, but he is unresponsive. Honey Pot may may need a little bit of uh, psychology work. I don't know. Who knows? What do you think, Tibbs? That's right, Beast. Uh, what? Oh, well, speaking of unstable, Tibbs, I'd like to move on to a uh, tag team that has seemed very unstable in recent weeks, and that is, of course, the former JWF tag team champions known as Eye to Eye. Now, of course, in the weeks leading up to the Regal Rumble, we saw cracks forming in Eye to Eye. We saw, we saw Scotty Moore and Scott Moore turn on each other multiple times just getting ready for the Regal Rumble. And, of course, when the Rumble happened, who were the final two men? to be standing in that ring none other than scotty moore and scott moore and we had to watch father and son clash for that shot to be be in the main event of wrestle palooza but it's been absolutely heartbreaking to me what about you tibbs <laughs> of course, Tibbs. And that is why I have taken it personally upon myself to reopen the doors to a little show that I don't think many people know about in the modern age of the JWF. Of course, in earlier years of the JWF, everyone is huge fans of the Rusty Spoon, my weekly interview series. And I decided to reopen the spoon for one night only and invite on the JWF Tag Team Champions known as I to I. So let's get to that. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the latest episode of the Rusty Spoon. I am your host. I am your bartender. I am Silver Spoon, and I am joined this week by a tag team that has been mired in controversy in recent weeks. Between recently having lost the tag titles to the Brunch Boys to being the last two men in the Regal Rumble match, eye to eye, everybody's been talking about you. Yeah, everyone's been talking about us. That's what they do. We're champions. We're men with gold around our waist. We deserve to be talked about. And I understand they've been talking about what's going on. Are we still on the same page? Are we still together? And you know what the people don't realize is that this man, he's not just my tag team partner. This is my father we're talking about. This is a man that raised me, and he put me in this business. This isn't just a tag team to me. This is family. Yeah, I got to agree with you, son, but in all honesty, I'll tell you, this has been the best couple of months of my life, but I got to agree with the people. Something's felt off. I don't know if it's... The Regal Rumble driving something between us or what? But I got to say, even I think something's wrong with eye to eye. I'm sorry, what? Now look, it ain't nothing we can't fix. It ain't nothing we can't come back from like we have time and time again. I mean, that's what we do. We fix what's wrong. But son, I understand you got a big match ahead of you. I understand you got the main event of Wrestlepalooza to look forward to, and I'm damn proud of you. So I'm going to give you a choice. I'm going to turn around right now, and if you want to leave, if you want to take that Rumble victory and go on and beat Blake Tanner's ass in the main event like I know you will, then go. But if you want to stick around, if you want to stick around and keep eye to eye together and win back our JWF Tag Team Championships and rock the JWF universe like only eye to eye can, then stay right here and shake my hand like a man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like Scott Moore has given his son an ultimatum and he's doing it. He's turned around. He's turned his back on his son and looks like Scott, Scotty Moore, I mean, Tibbs... What do you make of this? Scotty Moore actually looking like he's about to walk away. Well, it's, uh, it's the right thing to do career-wise. It hurts the family. That's right, but... Oh my god, wait! 
Scotty Moore actually grabbing his father from behind, giving him that handshake that Scott Moore asks for, uh, embracing his father in a massive hug. That, Tibbs, I got to tell you, this is absolutely what we... This is what I knew was going to happen. Eye to eye, they are a dominant tag team for a reason. They're family. I, I mean, this is going... This is something important to them. Sylphs, let me tell you right now, there is nothing wrong with eye to eye. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's eye to eye right here. I mean, who knows? They're probably going to go on to win the tag titles again. Who knows? Scotty Moore even may win that JWF tag team titles. These men may win all the gold, but oh my God. Oh my God. Scotty Moore super kicking his father. It, it, Scott Moore just laying on the ground. He's well, Scotty Moore is frozen in place. Scott just trying to crawl away. Tibbs, this is horrifying to see. What? I, Scotty, Scott, what, you, what are you doing? Yeah, Scotty Moore just dropping to his knees. Now he's grabbed his father's head, raining punches down onto the face of his father, his tag team partner, the man he held cold with. And now Scotty Moore's just standing and smiling at the camera. So, so Silves, did you want to know? Did you want to know if there's a problem with eye to eye? Well, I don't think so. Oh my God, and he's grabbed his father off the ground, tossing him out of the plate glass window that decorates the back of the rusty spoon glass raining over Scott's head. I can't believe this Scott Moore, that coward, he tried to get away. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that right now. Scotty Moore tried to just, jump through that plate glass window. Scott Moore, will you stop? And I just, I knew he was going to do this. I knew Scotty Moore was going to turn on him. I told you, Tibbs. I told you beforehand. This is absolute. I, I can't believe this. I mean, I, I've seen stuff like this happen before, but I never expected it out of Scotty Moore, the man who has been a champion, the man who has earned the respect of the JWF universe just to turn on his father like this. this is You're right, Silver Spoon, the fact that Scott Moore would turn his back on his son like that. That's right, Tibbs, but but I'll be damned. That's That might be one of the worst things I've ever seen in a JWF ring, and especially on the, on the comeback episode of the Rusty Spoon. But who knows? I guess we're going to have to wait till next week to find out what's going on with Scotty Moore, what's going on in his head. And, of course, next week uh, we're going to start the expiration date, the expiration chamber qualifying matches to see who's going to join Blake Tanner and the Dylan in that expiration chamber match. And who knows? Maybe we'll see what's going to go on with the Rat Sension, what's going on with the Brunch Boys, and what's going on with all of your favorite JWF superstars. But, of course, Tibbs... In order to find out, you're going to have to tune in next time on JWF Monday Night War. So, Blake, it has been a hell of an episode. What did you learn this week? Um, I learned that the, uh, the new 205 Live GM, Guitar Potato, is going to have to watch out because <laughs> he's about potato. to be... In trouble, 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 trouble. That motherfucker would never be 205. Don't even with that. And I learned that we now live in an age where Ryback makes sense and fuck Missy Hyatt. Uh, so, Blake Tanner, where can they find you on the internet? You can find me at my local hospital bed. Um, you can also find me at Blake oh, A. Tanner no. on Twitter. Um, you can find me in the... Uh, <laughs> in the Tylenol cold aisle, just kind of like in a, in a depressive state, just drinking all that blue medication until the, the, the nose runniness stops. Mm. Um, and you can find me at the darkroom video on YouTube and we've been doing some stuff. We're working on some stuff over there and you can find me sleeping and, and play and run and having a good time. All right, okay, all buddy. Okay, bro, you go to sleep. And you can find me on Twitter at Scotty Mo. That's S C O T T Y E M O. Make sure to buy all my books on Amazon. There's Quizzle Corp. Quizzle Corp. Reason I just got started on the third in the Quizzle Corp series. It's gonna be the final one. I'm really excited for it. And then of course the brand new book, BS versus the Gods, where me and uh, less sick Blake 
take on Grecian gods. We find secret organizations. It's like Supernatural meets American Gods meets a whole lot of whiskey. Uh, of course, make sure if you're listening on iTunes or watching on YouTube, however you are enjoying your fight, boys, this week, to leave a comment, subscribe, rate us, do whatever you can to help us out. Every single little bit helps. And, of course, make sure to pick up your fight, boys, merch over at BS. Dot com. All of our shirts are absolutely fantastically produced. They're almost as soft as WWE stuff. I'd argue even softer, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, you can find us at a load of pure BS dot com. Buy our merch at merch dot a load of pure BS dot com. Donate to the Patreon. Find us on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at Fight Boys Show Chuck Taylor. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you're a fight boy, you're a fight boy for life.